Hello there, all you beautiful thrill seekers. My name is Ghost Shadow Stubborn, but built for theme parks, and welcome to Ghost Chat YouTube channel. <laughs> Hello there, guys. My name is Ghost Shadow Stubborn, but built for theme parks, and welcome to a theme park Halloween update. I didn't think I'd be doing a Halloween update in January, but that's the way cookie crumbles. So, this is actually an extension onto an update we did a few months ago, well, about a month, about a couple of months ago. And this is all about Doncaster Fear Factory. This is the brand new Halloween event for 2021, returning after a few years, and we have some more sort of statements, got a full press article now, so we're going to recap all the details that we covered in the first video on this, uh, and also share some new stuff, including a statement from a spokesperson on behalf of the project. So, before we get started, with all of that make sure you like the video if you've loved it comment down below your thoughts and opinions on this event are you going to travel to this event if covid is no longer in the world also make sure you subscribe to the channel click the case bell so you never miss another youtube video also guys make sure you go into the description down below where not only can you find the link to this article but also you can find links to twitter tiktok instagram and snapchat for this channel and also the discord server link where you yes you the coast Chell fan base can be a part of the Chell nation by interacting with me and other fans of the channel and for now guys let's have a look at this free press local article sharing details that we've already recapped in the previous video and new details including a spokesperson's comment about the returning Doncaster Fear Factory. So of course this is from the free press and it says the Doncaster Fear Factory is set to bounce back after a three year break opening at a new venue and promising to be bigger and better than ever before. The ghoulish attraction will reopen in October and will include a number of hair-raising mazes where visitors will come face to face with a series of live action scary characters determined to make them scream in fear. <laughs> uh, formerly based in Scallow, this year's Fear Factory will be based at Thornhurst Manor near Carcroft. Um, spokesman Laurie Murray said the Doncaster Fear Factory is not seen for three years, but now it's back, bigger, and more terrifying than ever before. Now, Laurie, who's a business manager at Thornhurst and a self-styled terror technician, has many years in the scare industry, working at both Alton Towers and York, what, Yorkshire Wildlife Park, another local Doncaster attraction. Now, Laurie added to her original statement, we are so excited to bring the Fear Factory back to Doncaster. It's been absent for too long, and with Halloween getting bigger and bigger each year, we thought it would be now the right for getting the Fear Factory back open to scare the socks off the people of Yorkshire. When we closed the doors on the original attraction three years ago, I had always the intention to bring it back, but I wanted to do it properly with a proper budget and something to put Doncaster well and truly on the map. The original idea of the event was, was conceptualised about two and a half years ago, but we didn't want to comment on to it until we realised we knew something was really to do the job come October. It's gone through many rewrites, uh, and redesigns, but we now know that what we are producing really will blow the customers away and make them scream for their lives. I honestly believe that with the team that we're working behind the scenes to bring the fair to life, this event will put others to shame and really show the public what a great Halloween show really looks like. Now the attraction, just to recap some information basically, will include three scare mazes, two scare zones, food and drink, live entertainment, music and of course blood curdling horror a website with ticket details will be released soon so that's the article ladies and gentlemen thrill seekers of all ages from the free press and this explains stuff that we've already covered and also new details on the brand new Doncaster Fear Factory returning after a three-year break in 2021. Now, of course, we all hope and we all hopefully believe that COVID will be somewhat gone by Halloween this year. Fingers crossed. And, you know, what a great year to bring it back as well. If, if COVID's gone before Halloween and, you know, we, we get the full sort of Halloween horror experience back into these Halloween events around the UK, like Fright Night, Scarefest, Fear Factory, uh, York Mace, Hallow Scream, all these different events that are going to get that extreme factor back or some kind of extreme factor back would be amazing. Um, of course, like I mentioned there, three scare mazes and two scare zones. Now, for those of you who need a little bit of history on Doncaster Fear Factory, um, back on the original sort of channel, it was like, it was like a, te I mean, those of you who know it, remember it, it was like a temporary YouTube channel where I was like testing the waters of like phone uploads and phone edited videos. 
Um, but it was like one of the first videos I did was actually a reaction in the dark to one of the mazes from Fear Factory, and it was like actor interaction kind of thing. Uh, and I used to catch it on, fa on on film, which is nice. Um, don't think I've got that now though. But basically, there was two scare mazes at the original location of Doncaster Fear Factory: the dig and the house that drew breath. Now, the dig was like a, a digging, an abandoned digging site and sort of crawling through tunnels and trying to go through the actor scenes and things like that. The house that drew breath was a, but it pretty much a ha like a conga line type maze. You sort of hands on shoulders through the maze, through an, a house, an old house, and uh, again, getting scared all the way throughout. We've got three scare mazes and two scare zones. So I want to sort of use this as an opportunity to start some early predictions as to what I think the theme of the maze and the scare zones will be. Because it's very exciting. Um, it'd be nice to uh, see the construction of this event once it take, starts taking place. Um, so let's start off with the scare zones first of all. The two scare zones in the event. I think there's two big themes that could go for here. Now, I'm, in terms of scare zones, I'm looking at what Alton Tower Scarefest did with uh, the Freak Show. And you look at the Universal style scare zone where you've got one long stretch of path and you've got um, like actors placed at different points in the path, roaming around the path, and it becomes like a scare path, technically a scare zone. And also you look at Zombie Scare Zone at Alton Tower Scarefest as well back in the day. You remember that one. Uh, obviously Zombie Scare Zone used to be in Forbidden Valley. And, you know, the current the sort of latest plot of land for it was used this, uh, this previous year for Darkest Depths. So, you know, again, looking at that, a long path, zombies roaming around, different bits of theming around. And again, that kind of scare zone uh, across one long path. I'd like to see him go down that route with one of the scare zones. I'd like to see one of the path routes get taken over at a certain time for a full scare zone. Um, or like a separate path that just gets used for a scare zone path. Uh, in terms of a theme, again, I'd like to reference back to the other two that we mentioned in this video. Freak Show and Zombie Scare Zone. I'd love an undead theme. We saw some promotional pictures which I put on your screen. Uh... Big shout out to Fear Factor themselves for the pictures. Um, you know, credit goes to them. And, you know, I'd like an undead theme or a circus theme with either one of the uh, zones. I'd like, or both of them, I'd like to see an undead or a circus theme. Maybe uh, get some actors in straight jackets and we'll do like a mental asylum scare zone theme. Um, so it's like a full path where the mental asylum, um, asylum seekers are sort of roaming about in their free time. So... You know, it'd be nice to have like an asylum seeker type path for a scare zone. Again, that'd be lovely. Maybe one area, maybe not even just one path. Maybe there's an area of the of the event that gets taken over at certain points, or different areas that get taken over at different points throughout the night uh, from the same kind of scare zone theme. So maybe asylum seekers go to one area at one bit, and then one area the next. So it's going to be interesting to see how the the zones work. But now about the scare mazes, because I think there's a potentially great theming going on. I think at some point, whether it's a zone or a maze, I think we are expecting an undead maze or zone. I think I think I'm sort of going towards the maze with this one because I think they could do some really cool stuff with the undead, and I think they can do some really original storytelling with that. Um, another maze they could do is the doll's house. Now I was sort of thinking about this, and I was like, what if we got um, sort of dolls come to life and sort of you know, pure evil dolls trying to, like, kill you with pacifier knives and, you know, something really original like that would be lovely at Halloween events, specifically Fear Factory as well, because I think it sort of twists itself into a whole new brand of horror. Um, a, th a third and final one would be I'd like to see him sort of twist the story of the Seven Deadly Sins. I'd like to see that. I don't know what it is about it, but I'd love to see that. Um, you look at what Thought Park Fright Nights did back in the day with Seven. Uh, I didn't get a chance to do the Seven experience, but Thought Park Fright Nights. But, um, you know, I heard loads of reviews from it. Really good. They made use of the Seven Deadly Sins. They told the story well. I'd like to see an original version of the Seven Deadly Sins and sort of twist the story about and create like a alternate route in the story that fits towards the Mazes story. So again, that would be lovely. In terms of the type of Mazes, because of course, if you're going technical here, you've got to look at different types of Mazes they could go for. They could go for Free Roam. Look at Cabin in the Woods at Thought Park Fright Nights, for example. That's a Free Roam Maze where you choose your own fate. 
um, the the hands on shoulders, the conga line as we call it, but the hands on shoulders style maze again. That's like house of drew, house that drew breath. It's like a hands or shoulders style maze. Uh, so you can either do it conga line or hand line. Um, so again, that either one of them is the same kind of type of maze where your hands on shoulders or you're holding hands going through the maze. So tight walls, loads of jump scares, abandoned house theme, something like that. Um, Another type of maze that would be great, um, again that could be one of the, th it, it could suit to any one of the themes, a blindfold maze. This would really put the fear in Fear Factory, where you have like a bag on your head or a blindfold and you are walking through the maze with a guided rope. Look at things like the passing at Thought Park Fright Nights. Um, we also, I, th I think we also have Altonville Mind Tour, uh, no it wasn't, the, it's the Haunting of Molly Crow. At Alton Tower Scarefest that operated before Altonville Mine Source. Um, you know, both of them are really good mazes for blindfold action. So, you know, overall, I think, you know, Haunted Molly Crow, Altonville Mine Source, The Passing, these blindfold mazes, there's mazes, there's other ones out there in the UK, past and present. So, I'd like to see one of them, maybe. Maybe they go into the 3D market and go for like a Barnageddon 3D type stuff at York Maze Hallow's screen, where you have like the 3D effects uh, and the 3D scares, as well as the jump scares from the actors themselves. Again, that'd be really cool as well. So, there's a lot of different possibilities in terms of the types of mazes. It's all about matching it with the theme. So, I've sort of gone with um, an Undead Maze, a Dollhouse Maze, and a Seven Deadly Sins Maze. The Seven Deadly Sins, I'd like to be I'd like them to be really clever with that kind of theme. And again, this plays into maybe the blindfold maze. Um, so you have the bag on your head and you're sort of being guided by this rope through the maze in in your own groups. And you sort of rely on sound and little touchy scares here and there, like little like little nips and picks and uh, things like that. Nothing near the feet, obviously, because it'll cause accidents. But, um, I mean, if it was safe to do it with feet, if there's a way of doing it with safety, then fair enough, go to the extreme. But, um, I would rather go with the arms kind of thing. And the, the arms, the body, the, the head, the hair, you know, the, the nice little, the little touchy feel just to give that little jump scare during either a blindfold section or a full blindfold maze. And again, the seven deadly, deadly sins, theme would play really nicely to a blindfold maze with those little touchy moments here and there. Uh, the undead maze, I'd like to see maybe the free roam technique come into effect. Uh, so again, choose your own fate and it's sort of, you could even play on the zombie undead story. Maybe it could be like an original Walking Dead where you have like a classic subplot uh, sort of going on in the story of this undead maze. Um, so you look at Walking Dead Do or Die, for example, at Thought Park Fright Nights, and you look at what they did with that, and the fact that they sort of had this community, it was, it, it, they still were like, oh, we're welcome to the community, you know, we're a very happy family, and then all of a sudden you understood that they were chopping people up and feeding them to themselves with cannibalism, so... Yeah, and it's making the people insane. So, again, there's a classic subplot to the undead classic theme. So, these classic subplots and twists and turns in the story from an original maze theme makes the mazes different, unique, stand out, enjoyable even more than the original theme. Um, the doll's house, again, maybe the hands on shoulders as you're walking through the big doll's house. You've been transported into this massive doll's house with pacifier knives and, you know, uh, different insane bits and walking around different jump scares and maybe there's a strobe lighting scene if you wanted to have it. Uh, I know the dig, uh, the dig especially, uh, from the old Th Fear Factory in one section, I think had a bit of strobe action going on. Uh, and I know the, uh, the meat locker, uh, in fact, no, it wasn't the meat locker, it was the single Singularity, in fact, um, at York Maze Hallow Scream. I think I thought there was a thing in Meat Locker with strobes, but it wasn't. It was Singularity, and there was like a strobe section where it was strobe off, on, off, on, off, off, at lightning speed, and you could hardly see yourself, never mind see the strobes going off. So you need good eyesight for that kind of maze if you're going to put a strobe effect in there. So I think there's really good possibilities, really good classic subplots to throw in there with the twists and turns of the original theme. And really make it original, really make it stand out. And it's going to be exciting to sort of find out in the coming months what kind of themes of the maze we're looking for here and what kind of maze themes we're expecting, you know, with this. So there we go, guys. So thank you very much for watching this Halloween update from Donkster Fear Factory 2021. Like I said, some more information there, a statement from a spokesperson, recapping some information and giving my first predictions as to maze themes, maze types, uh, 
twists, turns, subplots. It's good to have that sort of discussion now rather than leave it a few months down the line when we could have some information that leads to a more accurate prediction. It's nice to boldly predict stuff as well. So thank you very much, guys, for watching this Halloween update. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And for now, guys, my name is Coast Shell. Keep living the coast of life, and I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon. Take care, guys. Have a hallow-tastic day.